My name is Oliver Picard, and I've always dreamed of building my own car, together with my aerospace engineer and rallyist dad, Andrew. Hello. I found the perfect project. This is my Cox GTM. The remains of one of only 800 made. And that looks bad, but when you look at it from the inside, it's even worse. Crashed, fire damaged, rusted, unrestorable. We aren't just modifying, but completely re-engineering. We aren't just bolting on parts, we are making the tools that fabricate the parts to build my dream car. Bespoke one of one. This is Project Mosquito. Hello! Hello! And welcome to the workshop. In this video, we are finishing off the bulkhead. Yeah, we're finishing off what we started. Uh, it's basically, at the minute, just panels kind of stood up with a lot of clamps. But by the end of this video, they will be a freestanding unit. Yeah. We've got quite a bit to do because we need to make a piece for here and some for the back and stuff. But uh, should we get cracking? Yeah, let's get into it. All right, so I think what we need to do first is uh, trim these flanges down. Yep. We can tack it in place then. Yep. Yeah. We can get this lined up, that one lined up, the same at that side. Yeah. And then with this, this is all right, it's not. No, but it's the orientation this yeah, way that no. we need to lock in, yeah? Yeah, and then we can get rid of the clamps. Yep. And then we've more into it. We can put the body back on and check everything all lines up. Okay. Sounds good to me. Can you be a tiny hole? You can be a tiny hole. We'll have to drill them as well, won't we? Yeah. You can work them on the outside as well. Mm -hmm. There's a dual-edged sword to making st stuff a unit and that's that once it's a unit it's easy to manage because everything isn't all floppy and everything's all together. The problem is that everything then is all together so it becomes really hard to manoeuvre and adjust things and drill things because everything gets harder to get into. Holes like this will be really difficult to drill so the more work we can do on it now the easier it will be later on. Because can you imagine if this was like a big meter long wobbly thing?
wearing a bit more. Probably has a little burr on the plastic. A bit. Okay. All to drill in now. See if we can actually get inside to weld it when it's done before we weld it into a box. Because there's no point it being a box if you can't weld it to the tunnel. Right, can we get in down here though? That's the issue. Isn't it? Because we can take the tunnel out to. Don't pull your bottle over. Um, we can take the tunnel out and lay it on a bench if we have to. Yeah? We need to make a little vent for here that'll direct the foot blower into the passenger side foot well, otherwise it will just blow into the middle of the centre tunnel. But we're not going to make it yet because we want to make it out of half millimetre thick steel because it doesn't really need to be structural. It will stiffen the centre tunnel, but other than that, it's not really doing a lot. But we've just bought a big sheet of half millimetre steel. And when you buy a big sheet, it's always better to do the big stuff first and then you end up with loads of scraps after. And you can use those smaller bits to make things like this. So we're not going to make it yet. We're going to wait and, uh, and do it later. Now we're going to fit the heater matrix. It's actually easier to do it now than it was on the original Panda, due to the fact we've chopped it in bits. I wouldn't quite break it to fit like that. Uh, do we need to put this cable through the grommet that lives behind here? Yes, I've mar just marked it out now. All right. So, and one of these goes through the hole, which I assume is this one, and this one goes in the bottom there. Yep. Yeah? Yep. Okay. 
and so that's easier to secure. Yeah. Yep. Open. Slide in two. Is it in proper? Is it supposed to be up against its thing and everything? Yep. It clips together like an IKEA picture frame. The the clips are almost identical. <laughs> now we've got our heater support in place, we can actually put on the top of here we can put a bolt up, we can weld one in a captive. So then we can actually bolt the heater down. So it's it's bolted in three positions on both sides and then at the front. And that'll hold it super secure and yet it's super easy to get out, get all of it. Literally, it's, it's not even a five minute job to change the heater matrix now. So now we have the heater matrix in. We can make the top of our footwell come out, up, miss these and along. And then obviously match this tube here and that'll be tied in here and so it's massively massively strong is it overkill yes is it awesome also yes sometimes in life when you've got a problem you're just too close to it and you need to like take a step back or someone can walk in the room and see a problem that a bunch of people have been working on for weeks and they're just too close to it and they can't see it. And yet the person who has no idea what's going on goes, why don't you just like do this? And it's the most obvious thing in the world, but you just don't see it. And that's the position that I'm in at the minute. I've been working on this car for two years, staring at this heater for two years and I haven't seen it. It's not in my plans, nothing. And yet I've just said to dad, and I've just said to you, we need to make a little tiny heater vent that goes in there to blow into the passenger footwell because the passenger side footwell is in the center tunnel and yet the passenger side the passenger isn't the person that has size 12 feet the driver is right so why don't we center the heater with the tunnel like this and move the driver's side footwell into the tunnel and make a little vent. And then that way the heater is completely out of my footwell. Because the reality is our windscreen is really curved. So it will demist no matter what. And this is a super wafter heater for a very, you know, it's a, seat, it's a heater for a, a four seater car in a tiny little cabin. So it's gonna demist no matter what. But I can have all of this room for activities. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make the top of our footwell and we're gonna make it loads easier. But what we have to do is we have to make a big bend on this piece. And then what we can do is we can seam weld this along and down and you'll never know. We don't need to remake this panel. We can just sort it out. But flipping heck, why didn't I think of this sooner? It makes everything better. It even makes the holes that runs to the heater shorter. <laughs> and it's one of those things sometimes something taking a really long time is the best thing in the world because if you rushed it and you had all the tools and you had all the gear the problem isn't the gear the problem is the meat up here right the problem is the the meat between the seat and the steering wheel sometimes you just don't see it and the beauty of taking your time with something and doing it really thoroughly means that sometimes you find a better way of doing something. It just goes to show having a plan is all well and good. Right, but you've still got to be flexible. And if there's a better way of doing it, do it like that. Sometimes you just haven't thought of something yet. Right. You need to cut that straight across there. Yeah.
just to give a little bit of perspective, these are all bits that we've trimmed off today. It takes, like we might show it as like, but, 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 whatever, when I edit it up, because I don't want an hour of trimming of a piece of steel. But this is the stuff that's super time consuming, isn't it? Yep. And then people go, we've only done that. For real. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh. That's it. It's getting lighter all the time. Yep. <laughs> Let's come a bit further across. There you go. You're in. So we'll have to make a little vent for the uh, vote later. <laughs> Made out of uh, that stuff. <laughs> <sighs> Those who don't follow me on Instagram and Twitter might not know, but I'm as particular about everything else in my life as I am about this car. And when I'm not in a workshop getting covered in grinding dust, I like to dress up and I like to dress nice. And so there's no way that I'm going to build my own supercar and have to change my shoes in order to drive it or have to drive it barefoot. And these are my favourite driving shoes. They're uh, handmade Italian leather and uh, they're incredibly comfortable and I want to be able to drive in my all my shoes as you do like I don't want to have to you know take my partner out for a nice meal change my shoes drive then change my shoes to go into a restaurant I just want to be able to wear shoes and these are a bit pointy and so I want to know that I've got the clearance it's a bit difficult at the minute because we've got no floor in, but this is the thing. Right, it's not a track car, it's a road car. And that means road shoes, normal shoes, <laughs> normal human clothing, not ballet slippers. Yep, look at that. All the room. So we've put a block of wood down that's five mil taller. Is it five mil or ten mil? Five mil taller than my feet will be when they are on the master cylinders. Please excuse the incredibly loud sparrow. Um, but with my feet on the master cylinders, I still have plenty, plenty of room, which is great. Some people were questioning of this like feet up driving style. That's the world's loudest sparrow. But it's a bit like sitting on your sofa and putting your feet up. Because I want to drive this car a long way. It's not a track car. It's for like alpine roads and driving to the Nürburgring. And I want to be able to drive to the Nürburgring and do laps. I want to be able to drive to Morocco and visit family. Like these are long days in the car. And so for me, it's really important to be comfortable. And I'm not comfortable in like 99% of of sports cars just because I am so tall and, and quite wide shouldered as well um, you know I don't fit in a, a, a Land Rover Freelander <laughs> like there's really bizarre cars that I can't drive I can fold myself into most stuff because I'm, I'm slender but because I'm so big I can't do it for a long period of time uh, if anybody's watched my uh, my Renault 4CV review where I'm driving with my head on the roof. You're a post-war lady wearing a long skirt and it allows you to sit in the 4CV without showing your knickers, swing your legs in and close the door. A bit. I wouldn't get a 9... I wouldn't get a 924. I'd get one of these because... Uh, there we go or even the Unimog review. I fit into a Renault 4 CV better than I fit into a Unimog. Where's the logic in that? But it's true. Um, but I fit into this better than I fit into any modern sports car or most classic sports cars for that matter. And I should do because we've made it. But yeah, all we had to do was move the heater over. Super. Right, let's make some footwell tops. Yeah. Roop. Uh, 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 
Best bit about now having a roof. It's alright. Then we need a, a bend from here. We need a flange here. Yeah. No, a bend from here to there. Yeah, you want to put one onto the side while we're here. Yeah. Then we've got to find it on both sides then. Nope, if it weren't stiff before. It is now. <laughs> So the way I've worked it out is we want 30 mil gap, so I've marked our center line there to there. Well, Dad did that, and then I've made these two 30 mil, uh, or rather 15 mil from the center line on each one. The outside radius is 52 mil, and the inside radiuses are 40 mil. should do that. So we've gone for a big perimeter and a small perimeter rather than the X in the hope that it won't deform the, the panel as much as doing a cross. Because when you do a cross, you run across your own bead roll. And we learned that last week. And in a, in a small cross, it was all right. But I think in a big long one like this, it would completely twist the panel. And especially because it's only half mil. Yeah. I think it would really like and we've done these asymmetrical because dad likes asymmetrical stuff and it just goes to show when you build something with somebody a bit of you definitely goes into this because <laughs> even though i've designed this car the rear hoop is asymmetrical yep. the center tunnel is asymmetrical yep. the center console is asymmetrical and the heater mount is asymmetrical by my own design now no. <laughs> <laughs> right so it just goes to show that even, well, I'm wearing you down slowly. No, it's not, not to throw that. We have very different tastes for each other. We're very similar in a lot of ways, but we're very yeah. different in others, aren't we? We yeah. like different colours, we like different cars. We like, even though our ethos is very much the same, we approach it from two completely different directions. But I think when you're doing something with somebody, you can't... There's no such a thing as like the George Lucas, this was all part of my original vision. You can't do that, can you? Nope. Because... Oh, things change. It, uh, no, but it's a collaboration. Yeah. Like anything, anything that you do with somebody is a yeah. collaboration. And I, you've got to be really open to that. And I think that's really important. And I think, you know, this whole thing of like one man's vision is never a good idea. I think you're better with a small team of people yeah. working together. Yeah. Because you need checks and balances, don't you? Yeah, you yeah. need someone to like... The thing is, if you've got the ugliest car in the world and you stare at it for long enough, you end up appreciating it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I still think a panels looks like a prolapse. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I know what you mean. Yeah. Somebody looked at that and thought, well, several people, because people bought them. But someone looked at that and went, Oh, Donkavort, that's another one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, Donkavort, but you make a flipping ugly car and it's got the aerodynamics of a brick wall. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, several people looked at that and went, ooh. Oh, yeah. 
Um, but and you need a, you need someone to go. I'm sorry. I know you love it, but it's those bit... front tires that are just hitting the air are utter garbage and maybe you should take a second run at that and yeah. you need someone to be really honest and say maybe you shouldn't buy twitter <laughs> <laughs> um you know you, you do you need somebody to like yeah. and it's important that you don't you have somebody that has a different taste to you yeah it's why writers have editors yeah you need that it's, it is important isn't it of course it is Can you see that radius? Because mm -hmm. I can't. <laughs> there we go. And you can just see now how much it bends the snot out of the panels. Last week it wasn't too bad because we were using one mil, but with half mil, obviously. We a bit jealous of you. Keep using this bead roller. I haven't had my turn yet. So at the minute, all of this is quite precarious, but once it's welded in, it'll be super strong. This is the thing, it's, it's a bunch of like flimsy stuff that comes together to become a strong thing. It's the whole like idea of the chassis. And unfortunately, we can't make it strong until it's time to weld it in. And this week we don't have time, but we do have time to make the other side, don't we? Yep. Because we need to do a bit of a welder fog. And once you start welding these, it's a really time consuming process because we'll have to weld them, cool them down, weld them, cool them down with compressed air. Because when you weld something so thin, it has a tendency to twist even more, which obviously is an issue because it's already quite twisted. So that'll mean clamping it up, welding a bit, like moving it, clamping it. So that very time consuming process is something that can happen next week when we do these side panels in here but for now shall we make our other side yep 
One of the issues with moving the heater is that we've made a rod for our own back because obviously we now need to weld a piece in here and it needs to look like we did, haven't done anything. But we'll do that next week because it's not a very interesting job. It's just making a piece that looks like the rest of it and seam welding it all in and then linishing it off. We'll get this done for now. And then when we're welding, we can weld everything all together because we've got all of our parts. And then this can all be one unit that can be taken off and put back on. And uh, <sighs> it's a whole thing. <laughs> All right, that's in it. Yep. So we can get our measurement to the... We might not even need to cut a hole. Yeah, I think we do. Yeah? And then we can get that to come straight across there. There's something very menacing about a large hole saw on a coilless drill. I don't know why. Yay! <laughs> Both jumped. <laughs> Take some force, I tell you. fits rather well does that for no fettling no trimming no nothing and we can make this kind of bullet shaped in the future this cut out in the side so that you can get your holes obviously the hoses will come up and round and we can get the holes in and we can do the holes clamps and do both from the same side because you don't want to be climbing in your hole in your uh, footwell to do one hose clamp up do you but yeah super happy with that it just needs this bend on there. Yep. This, this bottom, yeah, mm -hmm. just literally needs a bit less bend in it, actually, if anything. So just pull it out and just take a little bit out of this and a little bit out of this. Can you see how it's slightly Z shaped? Mm -hmm. yep. That's it. Well, that piting tops, <laughs> foot, foot well tops. There's a reason why nobody uses this grade of steel to make stuff on YouTube and in on, in like handmade cars in general. It's a right pain, isn't it? Yeah.
it's super bendy, super floppy, and it only all comes together when it's all welded together. It becomes a super stiff structure. No matter what you do, anything that you do, and you walk past it and breathe, and it moves in a direction that you don't want it to. And we aren't Italian, and our names aren't Zagata, but I'm quite impressed for how far we've come. And like Dad says, when it all gets welded together and pulled into position, and we manage to pull all the little kinks out and creases out, it'll look amazing. Yep. It just looks ever so slightly ropey at the minute. Yeah, the bead rolls look, look superb, and they've added tons of stiffness. Yeah. Like to, to say how thin this stuff is, I mean, to, to put into perspective why we're using this, this is half the weight of this. So for every square centimetre of this that we use, we save 50% on using this stuff. And that's why we're using it, even though it's such a pain in the backside. Yeah. Um, but there's a reason why people don't do it. Big OEMs do it because they use a massive stamp and it just goes, dunk, don't know. Yep. And then they cut all the wobbliness off, yeah? yeah. And uh, there's a cool, there's a few cool, like super cool builds on YouTube. There are, but there's a reason why there's nobody else doing this stuff. <laughs> and uh, yeah, absolutely love it. So if you've enjoyed this video, I have to go now because I have to go and uh, do social media because one of these videos is going up and I need to answer all your comments. So if you want me to answer your comments, make sure that you leave a comment down below. Tell us what you think because we reply to every single one that we have time to. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe and... <laughs> Are you tired? Yeah. And don't forget to share these videos with your friends on social media and on forums and stuff because it really is... Obviously, this, this stuff is niche. Like, niche is where we live and you are our people. And so we need your help to find other weird niche people who enjoy montages of welding, cutting and grinding and to bring them here to watch these videos. So we can't do this without your help and thanks to all of you because this channel is going from strength to strength and I like you, you're all incredible. So thank you all for watching. Please be awesome to each other and uh, we'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.